The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour. The Dow's up 10 at uh, 33,004. We're looking at the S&P. I want to go through this quickly because there's a ton to do. Up uh, 6 at 41.38. The QQQ leading the pack so far, but now it's only up 224 at 3.10.50. Uh, hitting a trend line resistance at the 310 level. Hmm, we're going to be watching this closely. The IWM is pulling back $1.10 at a at 184.23. Had a very nice bounce from 168 to the 180, I think 86s. And now it's at 184.28. Uh, we're going to be watching this closely. Looking at gold, uh, gold is now down almost four at 18.44. Silver is. Silver is uh, peak C. It's pulling back a little bit, making the arch formation, the dreaded H, that is. Uh, we're looking at up 0.08 to 21.77. Needs to get to the 22.76 area to say, hey, I want to get even higher. But so far, it's been big resistance in the 22s, low 22s. We're looking at the, I just want to do this. We haven't looked at it for a few days. High-grade copper. High-grade copper has made a leg C. Could be a peak C today. But way at the bottom end of the range, well, I want you to look at wood, which is a global. I like to put these together. So we've got high-grade copper, which is international. It's really a... It's just kind of a benchmark of what's happening internationally. And I like to put it together with wood, which is the global iShares. Timber and Forestry ETF made a peak B. It's in the middle of its range, um, sort of underneath the midpoint, I'd say. But holding very nicely, considering at 88.39. Uh, yeah, we want to see it up in the 92 area. Definitely not under 82. Sorry, 80, 84 um, but it's in the middle of the range right now. Looking at the TLT, and this is a real issue because the TLT is only up 20 cents at 116.76, and that means I'm going to go to the um, – uh, let's go to the – uh, FVX just for the moment. FVX – so this is the five-year. Oh, I used to have this all notated. I'm getting tired of these things being wiped out. And that's, uh, I have trade stations, not trade stations' fault. It's just I, there's something going on. I, I've never figured it out. Uh, suddenly I shut down and I lose data. And because I, every single chart that you ever see that has my notation on it, every single piece of lettering comes from me. It's not automated. So I have to do, it doesn't take, look, it doesn't take long. I'll just do the monthly chart. I'll do the uh, weekly chart right here. Let's just do this. Peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. Give an up arrow for the start. This is the yield. And then you get another one going there, right there. And there's not an instant restart because it took too long. But that is a leg A, a leg B, a leg, yep, C, and there's your D. Uh, D is the fourth highest peak. That's where other things can happen. And you've got a peak D in the weekly chart of the five-year. This is the, the five-year Treasury note yield. Uh, let's go to the TNX. That's the one I was going to go to. Oh, type it in over here. TNX. Yeah, this is going to be very interesting. Look, TNX. I made a peak F top just as the TBT made its peak D. They go, go together. This is the ultra short Lehman 20 year Treasury bond ETF. Uh, this is really 20 years or more. And it is the, the inversion, the TLT, is the one that went to a trough D and now it's gone to a peak D very quickly. I do not like that ever to see a buy signal go to a buy mode and then have a very small upside action going all the way to the fourth highest peak and then pull back, mm -mm, not good. So let's go back to the TNX and just discuss this a moment. Some people said, can you just take a moment to give us your uh, thinking of whether or not 
the T, there it is. Whether or not, no, I can't do that so quickly. My eyes said it's it's probably just a penny or higher. 2708, 2709. Yes, it's not yet peak D. Uh, it went to, uh, uh, sorry, trough D. It went to trough C. And now it's A, B. This is a new B on the upside. Very, in very interesting. Uh, so the yields are saying uh, we've got a cup formation. And remember, my, my contention is that yields are still going to go higher. That, yes, we'll get these interim slides to the downside, but you've got to think of this as an expanding uh, yield. And on the, oh, I'll have to do that. I didn't want to, but I will. But uh, in the my, my triple yield weekly chart shows you that the high that was made just recently could be a high that stays in place, even though there's a high-level con uh, co consolidation. But we don't go to uh, a new recovery high just yet in the yields. I don't know. I'm just saying that's a possibility. 3.277 or 32.77 was the 30-year TYX white. back. This is the white on the black background. A yield, and that's a peak E. We've pulled back. And look, here's the Global Timber and Forestry ETF within that rectangle for over a year. It has not broken to the upside or downside other than a brief intraweek pop and, and and back into the consolidation. And look how well the uh, Philadelphia Housing Index is actually acting considering all the tensions that are going on. All right, enough with that. Uh, I, 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 I'm not going to discuss this now, just to mention that the month is closed and this chart that I've spoken about that I consider to be a template from 1998, September 1998, when the S&P was at 1190, kind of travels like that. In one month, it can travel a 1,000 points. Um, I'm saying that this is at least for now what I'm thinking of at this particular time. I don't know if it's going to, nobody knows if it's going to be, but I am saying there are some enough similarities to say I'm keeping it in mind that this is still a peak B, in the uh, monthly chart, I can talk, I said I talk in the update at 10 o'clock, Tiger Financial News Network update, I said that I would close the space, that I would discuss in greater detail the monthly chart since May is done. I actually like to wait another day or so because when you get a monthly chart, it's not, remember, my whole thing about candles is it's not the candle, it's what the candle says if it's followed by another candle that confirms that particular action that you're looking at. Dow's down 65, S&P's down 7. This is what I was expecting today. Consolidation from yesterday continues into today. We're trying to pick up some new positions because we built up such a big cash position. I don't know if I mentioned this. I'm going to mention it right now, even though I'm interrupting a train of thought, that finally we are out of our GBTC. That is the Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin Investment Trust we were in it from about, what was it, July or something of 2020. We had spectacular gains, 300 and something percent gains. Uh, we've taken lots and lots of little bits off. We kept just a fraction. And then I said, you know what, for my, my trader's corner, I just need that space. It's not really worth it. I don't see Bitcoin right now doing very much. I think it's stuck in a range. Let's just get out of it if I ever get back in. I'm not sure if I get back into the Bitcoin investment trust. Um, Tom was talking about it, uh, 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 just the discrepancy between the futures and the Bitcoin investment trust. Uh, this problem. Oh, don't forget, Tom's got a fantastic workshop coming up next week. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, salesforce.com, cloud computing, um, kind of the leader in the field, at least uh, the, according to its CEO, it's always the leader in, in this field. Um, and it hit 311.25 in November of 2021. And it uh, took a little dive. It went down to 154, double bottom at 154.64 uh, uh, early in May. And then later in May, it hit 154.32. Then it had a very strong bounce over, over last night into this morning. It ran to 184, I'd say 154 to 184, 30 points, uh, to almost 19, 20%. Again, and now it's pulled back a little bit from the high. It's up 12. Now, that does affect the Dow. The Dow itself, so um, I I want to see the evidence. I believe, as I'm looking at it right now, that the 170s should be attempted to be filled over the next three to, to four sessions. But is this the takeoff that uh, Salesforce.com needed? It is a great company. I mean, if if uh, you know, ever since I was a kid, and uh, you know, my father used to say to me, "Don't brag, don't show off." Uh, if I did really well, I was a sprinter, and if I, you know, if I if I won my races, which I um, because I, I was very quick, um, I did usually win. But he always used to say, "Hey, hey, hey." so I've always thought to myself, you know, if people can do the job. I, I always give them the leeway to say, yep, I, I can do it. There's a difference between Bregioso and just mentioning it. And the, and the one thing that's really important is that Benioff, over the last, I don't know, how many years is it, just been going on and on and on. Whenever he's interviewed, he's just talking about that we've gone from, we, we should be a billion dollar company, then we should next year, we should double it. Oh, and the following year, we should double it. But he has produced the goods. But this big, arch formation that turned into a huge cup formation going from the high of August of 2020 around about 284 down to the 201 level uh, back in 2021 and then screams up to the November high of 311.25 he has produced the goods and that's I, I've always commended him for that but I did say when they built that incredible building in San Francisco that that could be a top and it was a delayed, uh, it, it, the building was built in, and still went higher, and then it turned down. And then when I heard that he was doing, he'd written books and he's doing all sorts of things that are in other areas, 
they could be fantastic areas, but there are other areas of his business. I said, I wonder if he's going to lose uh, his focus, just like I'm saying uh, with Musk going into Twitter. Is he losing his focus? Is this going to detract from his specialty of of, of two-mile-long um, hangars that contain rocket ships and Teslas or whatever it is? Um, we'll see. So now he's come out with a, another great earnings report. And you have to ask the question, why did it go down from 311 to 154? I, to me, that's a legitimate question. And it isn't just the tide, the tide change from uh, gross stocks. Something else was going on. And now it has to regenerate and, and, and get back. For instance, there are other companies. For instance, IBM is one of those companies that uh, IBM trading at 138.71 right now. Had a big, I'm calling this a leg A, gone from 125.80 to today's out of 140.70, 140.47. It's in the same area, and they finally getting things right as well. And I believe that you're going to find, as you have with Microsoft, let me just show you Microsoft right here. Microsoft going from to the year 2000 as the leader, and then just getting wiped out, and then coming back, that resurgence, that rebuilding, that re-energizing, I think finally that we are starting to see that in some companies, and I, I'm thinking maybe IBM is going to be that also in now, mostly in the cloud business. So here's your Microsoft chart. It's not a bad looking chart. It has gone from 349 down to the two, uh, was it 242 or something? 246 level of the 20th of May, and now it's at a nice 30 point pop at 273. Um, so I, I, I don't rule companies out, but I do I do say that cloud, the, in terms of uh, Salesforce.com, as I understand it, I haven't gone into it in great detail, but as I understand it, I believe that he, he did produce the goods. So he had every right to be a little kind of showy. And I think in a certain way, it's called Salesforce, and I think that that's his greatest strength this is really a salesman par excellence. Now we're going to see, can they produce the goods? Let me go back, CRM. Uh, can they produce the goods? They have produced the goods. You've got, the, you've got this big spike. Is the 154 sacrosanct now? That's your takeoff level, or is that going to be retested? The answer to that, I believe, will be found within the next, what is today, the 1st of June. So this is the beginning of June. By the, let me just check my calendar here. So this is the first, by the, Give it two weeks. By the 16th, 17th, the week of the 17th, as we're going to the end of the week, has Salesforce taken out 170, which, oh, no, it's not 170. It's 169. Ten, it's called 170. Has it taken out 170 absolutely key support, or is it actually tackling um, made the high of the 28th of April, which is 186.93, um, will that become a base and it's trying to tackle the high, the bar that was of the 20th of April that started the big red candle, big sale, sell, sell going down to 154, and that was at 193, uh, 193.30. So that's what you need to look at because if it just leaves us, if it falls part of the gap and then breaks the gap and actually starts to move towards above 185, it's called 186, the 14 period moving average in the weekly, it helps the pink nine period moving average finally start its trek towards the upside and it hasn't been able to hold an upside turn at all. And the stochastic is back at 14%. It's really very low. It was a single digits recently. And the, and the MACD in the weekly chart, the histogram is improving, but it hasn't crossed positive. So it's a peak D in the monthly chart. D is the fourth highest peak. That's where other things can happen. And look what happened. Question about Facebook. Facebook right now. Yeah, this is, I believe Facebook is still stuck in a range. I don't see anything that's attracting me to Facebook as a potential a buy other than a, a, a quick trade. I think it needs more time. I'm really worried about this major uptrend, mini Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone that's been working so far, as well as the um, Fibonacci expansion to the downside. 238 is where it stopped dead at 100, just under 170. Was it under 170? 169.00. I'm sure I typed that in. I think I lost it one of those days when I closed down suddenly. Around number... 
low. So that's your round number low on Facebook. It's trading at 194.88, up $1.27 right now. I think it's got a bit of a problem. I think it's going to take a while. I had a question. So that was that. That was that. that. Oh, um, could I look at Baba? Oh, that's what it was. Alibaba. Yes, stuck in the rectangle. Very nice action going from the 78-ish uh, area up to uh, up to 90s. And now it's at 94.70. No, I think this is in the stuck range. Dow's down 170, S&P's down 23. I want to see a pullback today. It's very important. I'd like to enter some of our bigger positions, bigger, higher price positions. It's not expensive, but higher price positions on a pullback. We'll see that. I'll be back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I post the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Tom O'Brien has just announced a live Timing the Trade webinar Friday, June 10th from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Join Tom O'Brien for five hours of live education as he teaches you his trading methodology right from his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. In this live webinar, Tom O'Brien will be teaching you his entire trading system, including quality volume, ABC structures, Fibonacci confluence zones, cause and effect, swing points, and more. We will be limiting this class to 40 attendees, so please do not delay and reserve your seat today for this special live event with Tom O'Brien. All attendees will also receive a physical copy of his book, The Art of Timing the Trade, an $88 value, mailed to you, along with a free month of his daily newsletter, Market Insights, a $169 value. For all the details and to reserve your seat today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. So I got sent, Jeet sent me a thing, IPO, uh, let's see, uh, 31.60. Uh, monthly chart, Pisani IPO market has collapsed. I guess that's uh, Pisani. Uh, so let's see. This is peak A. I believe that's B. A. B. And it squeaks to a C. And it's just stuck in this lower range. Yeah. The IPO, Renaissance IPO ETF. Wow. I'm, I'm beginning to think here that how's ARC doing? This is the same person, Kathy Wood, I believe, ARC. Is it 43.58? No, wait, does she run all of them? I have no idea. I know that she has some ARC itself, ARC Innovation, which is at 43.55, uh, down 58 cents, stuck in this lower range. I'm beginning to think here that maybe um, the trading gods are about to 
di- di- divorce themselves from the, the NDX 100 and the very specific stocks in the ARK Innovation. Because look, $35 to, uh, yeah, it's a fantastic percentage, but it's nothing really. $45 to uh, 46 that's 11 points. That's about 30%. Yes, a very nice percentage gain. But you're talking about something that's gone from 125 down to 35. So it, it just doesn't fit at all. So what I'm looking at here is that possibly just a little longer, we, we're going to get this intense di- the diverse diversity of some stocks within some groups acting very well but other stocks, because of other factors, these are factors we don't have to even know about. We just know that they're not participating. And we'll see, what is DDD doing? Uh, DDD, yeah, from $8.79 to about 11.30, uh, three points. There again, very nice percentage gain. But you have a stock that's gone for 56 Point fifty February of 2021, 3D systems down to 8.79 uh, the 12th of May. So I, I, I'm beginning to think that that's what we're looking at before these, these guys can really get a powerful move that says we're done going down. Maybe a little more hurt is needed. That's the way markets like to work. Those trading, those elves, they just love doing this. Um, so what we're looking at here is, uh, let's see, well, I was excuse the minutes. Uh, where, uh, Coda asks, where would you start building a position in IBM, please? Well, um, I've got this on my list uh, for my subscribers to my opening call. I discussed it uh, this morning. Um, I'm not going to discuss that right here. Uh, I do like IBM, but if it doesn't get into my buy zone at this particular point within the next day or two, I might just skip it and I might I – might, uh, change my mind and go into Salesforce, or I might just skip the whole area. Uh, I need to watch this ARKK a little closer because uh, the powers that be are really showing their hand by saying, we've, we've, we we're like some areas and we're favoring those areas and we don't like others. And so far, we've allowed them to pop, but we're not going to allow them to go much further. That's the way I'm looking at I look at the market as a, a them and us, those elves that are sitting there wagging their finger at you and... Uh, what are, the, what are the good elves? Well, the good bad, uh, good elves and bad elves. Uh, meantime, back at the ranch on a purely technical basis, IBM is acting well. I think it might be stuck in a trading range. And that says that it could be stuck between 140, 142 on the upside and maybe 134, or 135 to 134 on the downside before it really gets going and has an even bigger move to the upside. So with that said, I'm just going to leave that alone. Those are the parameters I'm looking at, and I'm still making decisions. Can I post AMD? AMD is advanced micro devices. Absolutely. Look at this. goes from, uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What did I do? I didn't retype it. 164.46 uh, back in uh, November, December of 2021. And it makes the dreaded H pattern, two of them, a big one, breaks down, goes all the way down to 99.35, bounces into the 130s, makes another dreaded H, retests at 100.80, has a fabulous move, peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, and a peak E, and within two bars, it makes three bars, it makes a peak E, boom, comes back down, makes an inverted V-shaped pattern, plummets down to the low that was made in the 83.50 area, I can't remember, I saw it the other day. Uh, 80, 8325 on the 12th of May, 8325. Uh, there's your chart, 83.25. And that's the reason why I've said, yes, we've built up a huge cash position. I'm not actually in a great hurry just to put it to work because we've got it. I love the fact that we've got a cash position. I love the fact that we have we are long the Dow from way, just off the low. I have a couple of positions and we have the long-term Long position from April of 2020, still have that, a good part of it. Um, I, I don't feel that I need to be in a great hurry to put the money to work just because it's there. I have to find the right stocks at the right price. I put in the bids. We'll see what happens. Um, 
we also have had just very low price single digit stocks that have been screamers. They have the capability intraday of moving up huge and then coming back. And by the end of the day, you've seen a fantastic, unless you're taking money off on each bounce, uh, you can see a huge gain turn into either a small loss or uh, maybe give back until it pops again. So I'm just being very selective. And I think it's important in this particular environment to say, I do not know 100%. I have ideas. I can trade those ideas. But the market is the boss. And <laughs> that's the most important thing. SMHs, yes, question about the SMHs. SMHs, legs, seat to the upside, gone from 215 up to today's high of 246. 30 points uh, on a 200 something dollar stock. I mean, that's 13, 15%. That's a really nice gain. But the high of 318.69, double. Remember all those double tops on the upside. We've been looking at the potential for double tops, double bottoms on the downside. Um, so you got 318.82 in November for the SMH Semiconductor ETF pulls back sharply, and then it runs back up and it goes where to 318.69, 25, 23 cents or something off the previous 32. Uh, yeah, 23 cents. And now look at this. It plummets down to the 215 area. So there's 100 points. It's almost a 30% decline. And now it's trying to rally. It is making a beautiful, uh, deliberate. It's a, how can I call it? Um, uh, yeah, I'll just call it deliberate. It's a deliberate attempt going from a buy signal uh, that fails to a buy signal again. It hasn't gone to a buy mode, but that support in the, it's a 241 right now, the support in the 236, 232 area is going to be cr crucial to monitor over the next week because if at any point it's able to close above in, in June, above the 258, 200 period moving average, close there on a weekly basis. This is the daily 200 period moving average. I want to see a close on a weekly basis above that level, and that will be very important because it significantly goes above the 14-period moving average of the of the weekly chart, and that's still negative because the pink 9-period moving average is still way below. This is all a work in progress. The move that we had yesterday, 222 points down, we now 214 points down, so we're taking back all of when we go to the dark quickly before we go to the break. But we've given back all of Friday's uh, surprise gain. That big move, no, not all, a good chunk of Friday's big gain to the upside. That 50 year moving average, what a tremendous key resistance area. I'll be back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hello, we're back. So the one-minute chart gave a peak eat in the chap wave at 9.39 this morning at 4165.00, round number high. And then what did it do? It pulled back and it held onto that 200 period moving average. Look at this. It's like it, like it was just made for it. Gives a, a landing spot. Landing spot breaks under it, tries to rally back again. This is the orange 200 period moving average. And then kaboom. Plummets down. Uh, that was from the... Uh, that was from the one-minute chart, the two-minute chart, made a peak G at that same level right there. And then you get the 10-minute, uh, and the 10-minute chart made a beautiful uh, right there. It was a beautiful peak D, and it gave you a Chapman Wave Roman candle to the downside. And 200 period moving average, the seesaw was up and down and up and down. Eventually, whoops, gone down. And it plummets, and now we're at 4101. So there's 4165 round number high for, to the 4103 level we're at right now. We'll see if we're going to start to find some support so that by the end of the day, uh, instead of accelerating lower, we start to, at least in some of the stronger indices, try to find some kind of support. We'll see the days young. Now let's go to the question that I had here was uh, XLU. So the XLU is the S&P Select Utilities Fund. Made a, p a peak F. I, I'm being as conservative as possible. According to peak F in the monthly chart, a beautiful up channel. Within that up channel goes to the channel. We have inside track repellent zone. Gets, uh, gets repelled. Now it's pulled back and it holds the nine period exponential moving average. So the question I had for myself when I was working on this just recently was, is this a brand new buy? a buy mode indication. It made a peak E in the Chapman Wave methodology in the week, uh, week of the 31st of December. It pulled back pretty sharply. It, it broke, just broke under under key support level and then closed back above it. And it looks to me like I have no choice but to call this an alternate count F slash B. And the reason why I'm doing all this is because Given the daily and weekly, uh, would you add here the question from Code in the Den on the, in the XLU? And I'm going to suggest this. It made a peak F, a double top at 77.23 in April, pulls back to the 14 period moving average, and then it has a quick spike and it goes to 77.17. There was, I, I discussed this, I didn't draw this in because it seemed unnecessary. It was very obvious that the, the high that was made the week of the 8th of April, and then the the retest fractionally under five cents below uh, on the 20th of April had much weaker technicals. And then we came tumbling down almost to the 200 period moving edge, made the lowercase h pattern, and then started to rally as if it was going to do the pattern that I talk about where the lowercase h successfully restarts and suddenly becomes a cup formation, except now we're going sideways. So the answer to your question is, if you're in it and you're in from lower down, let's just give it two more, two, what's today, Wednesday? Let's give it until Friday's show. I, I, to tell you the truth, I didn't like the fact that it already reached C. The technicals were very good. 
and that yesterday was an inside bar. Now looking at today's ugly candle down 58 cents to 17.75, I'm beginning to think that it's using up time rather than price. I can draw this in and I'll do it. Uh, it's not 100% correct, but at least for now, I can give you a nice sense of what we're looking at. So I don't know if I would tell you to put money to work right now by adding to it. Let's just look at it again in another couple of days. Let's look at it again Friday. But I can't tell you right now because there is a chance that that was um, an inverted V right here. So that's a little carrot top. If there's if you've used up a down arrow and you haven't gone and now you go to a new high without taking out the previous low, it means that you can use an alternate count in the Chapman Wave methodology. It just helps you, but you've got to use the shorter term time frame. And the shorter term time, time frame is really struggling. And I have a, a, a potential peak F. It could be an alternate count even in the, in the monthly chart. So, yes, yields at this particular point are, are, are still rallying. In a sense, the utilities have had brief pullbacks and then they've gone to higher highs. Is this just another one? Give me an eye. I don't want you to add anything right now if it's not working. So I'm just saying keep your core position. I don't think I would add it's down 60 cents. Maybe by Friday, if it pulls back, hold 73.30, the 14-period uh, moving average is green. It's still very positive, and the MACD is good, and stochastic's at 89%. I would like to add it, but it might be ca becoming a sector that's out of favor. That's why it's not at a new high and is stalling here. So I'm just saying to you, hold off. Uh, uh, Duffy says the dollar is rallying. The dollar is, yep, it's running nicely. It's up 62 ticks at 102.39. We're not out of the woods. That dollar still, well, we are still along the dollar from 90.07 via the UUP from 2018. So I'm not going to say anything there. But what I am going to say is that the U.S. Um, has a peak C1, C2, potential double top. That's the U.S. bonds. So the whole thing is getting a little bit more complex right now. And as a result, I'm just going to say I want to watch everything. I also want to watch crude oil because crude oil is just not – what are we up? Oh, we're up a dollar twenty-five, giving up a little bit. I'm watching crude oil because if crude oil breaks and closes above 121 on any day in the next uh, – Five, going into Tuesday a week, a week uh, yeah, let's go Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. I, I think then we've got this cup formation that says higher highs and higher lows. can see the price in the, in, the, in the weekly chart go to just under, right on or just above the previous high. It's 125.83, and then we get a test, and that's where you get a much bigger correction um, in time. We'll see. Histogram weekly on crude not looking good, hanging in the air. Um, that's the, the histogram right here. It is, it is improving, but it isn't anywhere as strong as it was. Stochastic still way down at 65. The unbalanced volume is really good, but getting a little overbought. I think crude oil is getting a little overbought, but I wouldn't get in the way at this particular point. Uh, and it might just use up that energy by going sideways goes to 125, let's say, and then suddenly you're looking at it stuck between 112 and 107, and it just stays there for a while. Who knows? So I, I wouldn't be playing games there. So there are a couple of things that I was asked about. A GDX, yes, let's look at the GDX. The GDX has gone to a peak C1, C2, just like the bonds. It looks like the bonds, doesn't it? So there it is, peak C, C1, and... C2. It's actually almost C3. But let's just call it C2. And at very often, peak C1, C2 can still see um, a leg D. But you got to be careful. Treat it like it is a peak D in the second digestive phase. So this is my, my contention for a long time has been that the GDX is not acting as well as it should, especially with uh, the dollar having pulled back so sharply. And yet it, it hasn't been able to favor gold. So the gold miners... That's kind of the clue for me, so just be careful. Um, is this one? No, good. Okay. Uh, all right, so we've got a break coming up, final break. Don't forget, folks, um, I believe it's a week from this Friday. Yes, a week from this Friday. Tom O'Brien does one of his great masterclasses all day uh, webinar. Check it out. Front page. What's that? I'll be back in a moment. How's that? How's that? 
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi folks, so a question when we asked about uh, um, Interplus uh, Core is trading, it's ERF. And the question is, ERF had a 52-week high of 15.50 yesterday. You've mentioned about a round number high. Please go over the significance of a round number. Also, your thoughts on ERF going along with a small position. When to end. Gee, maybe I thought we did that, and I said to you, start your position. Uh, maybe you didn't hear. I've even typed it in right here. This is the, the, the uh, session of the 26th of May. I said, start a position because it's in leg C. And if you get it and leg C extends higher, then you've got a pullback for, for leg peak C and then a new leg up for leg D. And that's the best time to get it. So now it that, that was, I think it was at 1458 at the time. I'm just guessing here. Now it's making a leg C today. Could be a peak C. It hit 15.33. You know what I'm going to do? I usually do it on a, on a Friday. I do technical analysis, but round number, highs and lows. I'll talk about it tomorrow. I, I don't have time, obviously, right now. So what I'm going to say is I like inner plus core oil and gas assets, but now you've at 15.03, and we were talking about it at about 14.58. Yeah, 50 cents doesn't sound much, but I, I tell you what I'm going to say to you is why not start a very small position here on ERF trading at $15.03. Yes, it could pull back for peak C, but then it should still go to a leg D above the high of yesterday, which is $15.50 if it doesn't do that today. And then let's talk about it because I'll explain what I'll do. In fact, I'll still talk about it tomorrow. I'll put it in here. I'll talk about it whether or not you're in it or not. And I'll tell you why I'm saying I like it. 
but it would only be a trade right now because you've lost all the impetus to the upside. So, folks, we're going to wrap it up. That Larry Pisavento is coming up. Uh, don't forget um, that uh, Tom's got a, a webinar coming up Friday week. Great programming here. You've got uh, Larry, you've got Thinkorswim, Kevin Hinks, you've got uh, Steve Rhodes, Dave White, Tom O'Brien. Wraps it up. And check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day.